Thank you. Um, well, in the last two days, we hit uh, a lot of plants. Many of them have been just collected here, around of the town. Um, but we really know what we are hitting when we hit the plant. Uh, I guess that we have a wrong idea of plants. We normally think that plants are low-level living organisms, uh, not at all sophisticated or evolved. Well, the real situation is the complete opposite. Plants are intelligent organisms. They are evolved. They are sophisticated. They have strategy. And uh, I will try to show you some example of uh, their behavior in uh, the following minutes. Well, um, how is that we have uh, this uh, uh, wrong idea how plants? It's something that is very old in our history. If we look at the um, uh, like this is the, our uh, pictures coming from the Lascaux site in France, the so-called 16th chapel of uh, prehistory, where there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, square meters uh, of pictures, but no mention, no nothing about plants. Why? Because plants, uh, probably, there was nothing glorious, nothing heroic in collecting plants, nothing to, to be remembered, much more uh, uh, glorious to, to hit, uh, to, to hunt an animal. And it's something that it's very hard. And in our culture, for example, in, uh, the, in, in Genesis, in uh, the Noah uh, story, uh, there is no mention of plants. And uh, God uh, is going to submerge the world and giving a lot of instruction to Noah how to, to deal with this catastrophe, but no mentioning one, uh, plants. Why? because probably plants were not feel, felt as creature of God. And even in the many representations, in the millions of representation of the Noah story, you will never saw a plant. But uh, funny to say, the first thing that Noah did after landing on the Hararat Mount was to plant a grape wine. So he, he had the grape wine with, his, with him, but they are not mentioned because they are not creatures. That means they are not living organisms. And it's not just in the Bible. For example, in Islamic culture, uh, where the representation, the artistic representation of the creature of God is forbidden, we have, not so, we have many representation. We have not so many representation of humans and animals, but we have millions and millions of representation of flowers and plants. Islamic art is a florilege. And uh, this means also that for Islamists, uh, 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 plants are not real creatures. And animals is confronting with a problem when we have, a, for example, a change in the environment. The first thing that a, an animals can do is to run away, to think a little bit, and to come back eventually. And plants need to sense what is, what is uh, changing in the environment with much more precision than animals, and this is why each single plant is able to sense at least 20, diff 20 different uh, chemical and physical parameters concurrently, in real time, in any moment. No animal is able to do the same. And plants are able to, to, to change their metabolisms, to cope with the stress. And yesterday, for example, we heard from Magnus that uh, leeks were able to, to grow at minus one. And uh, so it's, it's a wonderful example of how the plants are able to manage even a, a very strong stresses. Look at this movie. Here we have a, a snail uh, that is hunted uh, by a plant. This is many of you probably know about this plant. It's a, a carnivorous plant is called the Dionea muscipola, or for English speaking people, it's the, the Venus flytrap. And uh, well, I think that no one of you have doubt about what we, we saw. It's a plant hunting an animal. There is someone that of you have doubt about this? Well, yeah. until the beginning of uh, uh, 
19th century, that was not granted at all. For example, Linnaeus, that was a, a very uh, impressive and important uh, genius of biology of that time, Linnaeus, looking at the Venus flytrap, uh, wrote a, um, a series of absurdity, like that not to admit that plants were able to hunt animals. Yeah. And today, <coughs> the situation is not much uh, different. Uh, here we have uh, uh, Sir David Attenborough. Sir David Attenborough is probably the, the most popular, most famous popularizing, uh, popularized scientist. And, uh, and he is also a lover, a, a real lover uh, of plants. He did some of the most beautiful documentary about plants that are around. And when he speak, look, oh, now I will show you two short pieces of movie. When he speak about plant, everything is fine. But when he speak about animals, he remove the fact that even plants exist. Look. This is the biggest flower oh, in the world. This is the biggest flower the in the world. Whale. Okay. The blue whale. The biggest creature, the biggest creature that, exists that exists on the, the planet. planet. It's wrong. Because uh, 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 the blue whale is not at all the biggest uh, creature that exists on the planet. It's a dwarf, uh, if compared with... Uh, this is the, the single biggest uh, creature that exists on the planet. It's the Sequoia dendron sempervirens. And to have an idea uh, how big is this creature, this is a man here, uh, it's order of magnitude bigger than a blue whale. And we are, we are looking just on half of the plants, because we tend to remove the fact that plants are not the above part. There is a hidden part in the ground that is much more important for the plants and for us also, and that is as bigger as the above plants, at least. Uh, this is a tree of lives. The, 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 a tree of lives is something like the order of nature. It's something that... Uh, depict the, the, the relationships uh, among living organisms. And this is a, um, a, a tree of lives, uh, a German tree of lives of uh, 18th century, showing how from uh, a single cell until uh, the top, uh, uh, there is an evolution of uh, the life until arriving to the man. Well, uh, this is a, a wrong uh, tree. To have a, a right tree, we, have, we need to write, we need, sorry, to wait for uh, Charles Darwin. It's, uh, Charles Darwin, it's really uh, a changing of everything. After Charles Darwin's, nothing was the same. This is, a, uh, on the left here, we have a, um, um, a tree of lives that has been drawn in a notebook by Charles Darwin uh, in the first half of 18th of 19th century. And uh, here, on the right, we have a tree of lives that is, has, is based on our uh, um, knowledge about the genome of hundreds and of hundreds of different species. Well, this is a kind of uh, genealogic uh, uh, tree of uh, the life on the earth, where did you see that the two spots over there, the green and the red? We need to focus a little bit to see that the green one is Zea mice, the maize, and the red one is the Homo sapiens. So, uh, I want just to, to show you again, we are not so far. Mm. We are very close uh, uh, relative. In, we are in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in life. And another false idea about plants is that they are ancient organisms. So they appeared on the earth much before human, much before mammals. This is also true, this is true about the origin. But the angiosperms that are the flowering plants that today represent the, the the great majority of plant species existing on the planet appeared on the earth after mammals. So they are, from this point of view, much more modern than mammals. But 
the real stuff is that evolution is something that has been never really felt, has been never really understood. Uh, evolution doesn't work like this. This is a wrong uh, picture of evolution. Evolution is like this. It's a tree where each single species living today is at the apex of his shoot of evolution. So there is a parity of dignity among living species. Well, how is that plants have this bad reputation this bad reputation, they are uh, not so interesting and uh, low-level organisms. And Aristotle was the first big scientist, a, a tycoon of science, and uh, his influence is today uh, uh, um, very strong. And uh, Aristotle wrote that plants are very low-level uh, organisms because they lack movement and sensing, and this is a, a complete absurdity. Plants, of course, are not just able to, to move. Uh, they are incredibly sophisticated communicators. They are able to communicate with other plants of the same species. They are able to discriminate if they are, uh, uh, if they are speaking, communicating with uh, plants of the same tribu, of the same family or if they are communicating with plants of other species, or they are able to communicate also with animals, with insects. And for example, during pollination, yesterday pollination has been uh, remembered by may, many of the, uh, the speakers. Pollination is a very a serious stuff for plants, uh, because plants need to, have, to find a vector to move the pollen from one flower or from one plant to the other. And to do this, plants make, to get, make a kind of market. And all the pollination uh, has been uh, compared to the market where we have uh, uh, sellers that are plants, buyers that are the insects. We have banners that are flowers. So we have also some kind of hidden publicity that it's the flower uh, uh, of, uh, and the smell, uh, the smell of the flower, sorry. Um, it's, it's a serious business. business. The, the, the insect moves the pollen from one plant to the other, and in change, plants give the insect a very sweet and energetic substance compound that is called nectar. As a vector of pollination, plants are able to use not just insects, but every uh, uh, animal that you can image, uh, uh, birds, reptiles, mammals, has been and are normally used by plants to transport pollen from one plant to the other. But there are plants that are uh, uh, much more, um, less honest than the normal one, and they are orchids. Orchids, look at this, uh, uh, this is a, a very nice uh, uh, um, uh, um, article, a, period, a paper appeared in Nature some years ago, some years ago, is called the flower of seduction. They are uh, all the time, they are really, they act dishonesty and uh, uh, cheating insects by promising sex and nectar and giving nothing in change. <laughs> And look at this. This is, a, uh, this is <laughs> something. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it's it's a, an unicum in biology because here we have a, a very we have a tree, a, a kind of mimesis of uh, of a three different kind. We have we have a shape. The shape is uh, very similar to the female of the pollinator of the depollinator. We have. Um, a mimesis in the texture. <coughs> Look at the hairs on, 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 on the flower. They are the same uh, kind of hairs that are on the female of the pollinators. And this orchid is also able to produce uh, the smell of the, the female. And look at the effect. Oh. This is the not-so-smart bee 
as yesterday <laughs> was uh, uh, mostly reminded. Okay, and here we have the the lure. This is a non-social bee, I must say also, but it's uh, all, all, the, all, all the the same a bee looking for the for the female. Irresistible, attracted. Look, he touched to see if the texture is right. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, it, it seems happy. <laughs> and look at the plant. Look, uh, he, he put this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, yellow stuff on the head. <laughs> ah. This is a, 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 it's called a, a pollinum. Huh? It's it's the pollen. It's the look. It's very sticky, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the cheating has been so strong that uh, provokes ejaculation. So, in the place where you have these orchids, this kind of bees are unable to reproduce themselves because are completely uh, used for their sake by plant. Oh. On the opposite, there are very honest plants, like this one. This is a lupinus. He produces millions and millions of flowers, and he wants not to have the same flowers visited twice. So, when a flower has been visited by an insect, he changed the color of the petals from uh, <coughs> violet to uh, red, to, sorry, to white, to signalize insects, hey, here, there is no more nectar, look around and find another flower. It's a very honest plant. Oh, oh. I, 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 would, uh, I would skip uh, the seed dispersal, that it's interesting, but probably that's a little bit too, too, too long. Because, but I would like just to, to give you some uh, idea about this uh, white stuff here. These are seeds, so and this white organ here is called Eliosome from the Greek, elio means oil, soma means body, and are very rich uh, in uh, our body, uh, uh, very rich in lipid and proteins that plants produce just to lure ants for the seed dispersion. So, how it works? They produce this seed. The ants came to, to find the eliosome and bring the seeds with them, dispersing around. It's, it's, it's one of the uh, uh, most beautiful way, uh, strategy that plants uh, mm, uh, use to, to move around their seeds, like this one. And another wonderful uh, uh, chapter of the strategies are plant defense. Because plants are not so uh, uh, weak organisms as we, we think, because on the contrary, it would be not possible that today, on the planet, 99, more than 99% of the biomass, that means more than 99% of what is living on the earth are plants. Animals are just traces on the planet. So this means that they have a very, uh, uh, the very good strategy in terms of biology to uh, spread themselves around and to defend. And one of the, one of the way they, it's uh, uh, to defend the plant uh, that plant uses to produce chemical weapon. And uh, for example, in, uh, uh, in the, the 80, in South Africa, uh, um, many of these antelopes uh, that are called kudu uh, has been killed by plants uh, just by increasing the number, the, the, the percentage of tannins. Tannins, you know very well, are a, a, a component of plants. Normally, tannins are below the 3% of the composition of the, uh, of the leaves. But, when it, uh, but plants are able to increase this amount until 7, 8, 9, becoming really poisonous. So, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in this way, in, uh, at, the, at the end of the 80s in South Africa, uh, thousands and thousands of antelopes uh, died uh, because they were grazing too much for plant. And uh, there are many kind of uh, strategies. Look, 
uh, at the solanum, the, the, the potato. Wild, wild potatoes are able to, to uh, avoid uh, aphids in a very wonderful way. They, are, they re release in the, in the air a chemical that it's an alarm pheromone produced normally by aphids. So, the, the plants say to the aphids, oh, there is something that is not, it's going wrong here. Let's come away, go away. And they leave the plants. When we cultivate the plant, that is important. When we domesticate the plant, normally we, uh, plants uh, um, lose their ability to defend themselves. This is a, an important point, and yesterday uh, uh, some, of, some of the speakers uh, remind about the fact that we need a new plant for, uh, uh, to be domesticated. It's not so an easy task, because uh, plants are like animals. You cannot domesticate all the plants that you want. You cannot make a tiger your pet, for example. And it's the same for plants. The plants that we normally uh, hit, that because has been domesticated in the course of uh, uh, evolution, in uh, some world, they decided to share their life with, with humans. So we need to provide them chemicals and defense and so on. So when we, 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 we take a plant from the forest and we put the, the same plant in the field, this plant is unable to it's a weak plant, it's unable to defend themselves, it's unable to find energy and strategy. Well, ooh. Oh, plants are uh, able also to manipulate. Uh, we, we saw the, 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 the story of the, of, the, the, of the orchids, and I would like to show you this uh, example. It's called the Myrmecophily, it's a very uh, strange term. It uh, are plants that like Myrmex means hands, plants that like hands. There are many plants, many uh, thousands of species that have a very strict relationship, a symbiosis with hands. By uh, uh, producing uh, food for the hands and in change having the fence. Look at this movie. Uh, the plants is able to produce uh, uh, this drop of uh, uh, nectars, very, uh, very sweet, attracting hands on the, on, the, on the plant. This is a lima bean. And uh, the hands like a lot, this kind of nectars, and in change for this, they attack every herbivores that are, is on the plant in a very aggressive way. Pla hands are very aggressive. They, uh, among all the animals, look. Uh, and at the end, they, they need to, to go away, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and not just, not just uh, insect, uh, this kind of uh, uh, hands are defending the plant that is in symbiosis, even against other plants, because they don't want to have their own plant to be uh, surrounded by competitors. So, when there is uh, some plants close to the nest, nesting plant, it's attacked, look, and cut. Wow. And, uh, uh, and now there is the, um, the, the, the most probably uh, I interesting thing is that uh, Look at, at how the plants are able to make these hands depending. It's really, uh, a, it's really like an addiction, it's a drug, because these hands are unable to live without the plants, because the plants want to, to have the hands just for, the, for, for, it, for him. Look, if we, if we put some bread on, on the plant, The hands remove. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if we put some sugar, this is like, like giving gold. <laughs> Nothing. Come on. 
They put <laughs> away the, the, the sugar. <laughs> they are completely addicted just to, to hit the food produced by the plants. They are able to live just eating the, the, uh, the fruit produ produced by the plants just for the hands. Okay, and there is uh, people that uh, argue that it's, possibly, it's possible that not just insects and animals, but even human has been manipulated by men. For example, Michael Pollan uh, wrote that uh, um, we don't know if it's really, we have domesticated the corn or the corn have used us to spread <laughs> around all around the globe. It's something that we need a little bit to think. It's just um, to, to change the point of view. And uh, um, now I would like to show you uh, in the last Amazing minutes thought. how it's possible that plants are uh, able to do this. Well, in, in the, it, this is uh, Charles Darwin in 1880, at the end of his life, wrote this wonderful book that is called The Power of Movement in Plants. And, well, what he wrote, uh, I will go uh, um, in, uh, in the last uh, paragraph, that it's uh, something important because in the last paragraph of his book, uh, Charles Darwin normally put the, 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 the so-called take-home message, was that it's hardly an exaggeration to say that the, in the tip of the root, having the power of directing the movement of the other part, Lie, act like the brain of one of the lower insects, and so on and so on. And so, on. so uh, Charles, Bra Charles Darwin proposed at the, at, at the end of the 19th century that plants have actually a brain in the roots. And uh, it's a kind of, in, for, for Darwin, and, it's, and what is the real is that plants are like inverted men. So they have the cognitive part uh, under the ground that it's the more protected part as we put our brain among the most strongest bones <laughs> and uh, uh, the reproductive part above. So essentially what we like of plants uh, is the reproductive part <laughs> and the cognitive part is uh, below <laughs> ground and uh, uh, look, every, every organism have the two pole uh, separate. So we have the cognitive pole in here, and the reproductive pole here. <laughs> and it's the same for every single organism. And the plant is the same. If you want to, to see the cognitive part, you need to look at the opposite part from the reproductive part, and it's below ground. <laughs> and uh, uh, look, this is a, um, a, a root apex uh, uh, moving in uh, exploring the, the, the environment. And I look at the movement. It's the same movement that every animal without legs need to, need to do, to move. It's like a snake and worms, they move in the same way. And it's not an easy task. You cannot do this, this movement without having a, a kind of brain, a, or a brain-like. And uh, uh, um, I will just, just uh, to show this registration, these this signals that are you saying here are action potential. This action potential has been recorded in the root apex of a maze plant and are the same kind of signals that we have in our brain. It's the same kind of signals. Plants have no brain but have cells that are brain-like. Okay? Okay. And uh, just, you, you know how many roots you, there are in plants, because, I, oh, 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 sorry. Um, in uh, uh, each single root apex have is a group of cell-like, brain-like cells. But there are in a single plant of rye something like uh, 11 and a half million of root apex. And they work all together in uh, uh, networks. This is, uh, on, on the left, we have internet. On the right, we have a root apparatus. <laughs> Look at, the, at the, the similarity in the topography. They are similar because they work in the same way. They work in, um, in network. Oh, and 
yesterday, some one of you uh, 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 reminds about the fact that insects are able to, to, to uh, a single hand, it's a very stupid uh, insect, a single bee the same we, we saw. Uh, but altogether, they, they uh, display a kind of swarm behavior. It's the same for roots. Roots are able to, to grow and, uh, together and to, 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 to explore the environment in a very uh, uh, specific way. But where, uh, I want just to show you a last um, out of time. I would like just you to show this, this last movie. Oh, this is a, this is a bean. Uh, it's one of my preferred plants, and we normally call uh, uh, our experimental uh, plant with the name of uh, Italian genius, from Archimedes <laughs> until uh, Vespucci is Marconi. <laughs> in this case, and because I want to remind myself that they are intelligent. And look, <laughs> he is looking for a support. And this is a, there is a clearly an intention. He, the plants know where the support is and want to reach it. Look, it's, it's the, same, the same behavior that we can find in a sensitive animal. And if looking at this one, wow. uh, no one of you, <laughs> uh, some one of you is yeah. always it's thinking that story. plants are low level organisms. Well, I'm unable to, to speak, to talk. And uh, 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 take home message <laughs> plants are intelligent and sophisticated organisms. And we should use for plants term as behavior memory intelligence. But there is a no written rule that uh, prohibited this. If when I normally, I like to speak with, um, with people that it's not from my field. When I speak with, with uh, uh, other plant scientists saying that plants have memory, behavior, intelligence, there is all, normally I'm unable to finish a talk. Uh, and, uh, not all plants can be domesticated. And uh, uh, it's just a reminder. Just few plants. The plants need to decide that to, to live with the, the human, it's something that can be useful for the plant. And that is the most, probably the, mo the two most, now the, the two most important point. Today, we know just 10% of the plant species on the planet. So, come on, I am saying to you that we don't know nothing. Now we don't know nothing about 90% of the plants that are on the planet. Well, from this 10%, we have all the food we eat, we have all the, the medical, we all the pharmaceutical compound that we use has been for the first time uh, so look at synthesized starting from plants. So, what can be in the, in the remaining 90%? Probably the cure for all the illness and the, 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 the food for billions and billions of, uh, of humans. And the sad part of the story is that each day we lose at least the, the estimate it's between 3,000 and 4,000 plant species. They became extinct without uh, any idea from us, what, what, what they were. We never know there. So, my proposal is that plants need rights. As animals, I know that it's strange, it's uh, uh, something that can, be, can normally sound as science fiction, but I would like just to remind you that until the 50th century, so until 500 ab above Christ, uh, ch child, children had no rights at all. Okay, so a father, a Roman father, can be can decide to to sell, to kill, uh, and uh, to, to hit a child <laughs> without <laughs> any problem. Uh, yes, today it's a little bit difficult, and the animal also no uh, had now have rights. And I think that we need to grant rights even to plants, not for the plants, but for us.
Because if we lose plants, we lose ourselves. Thank you very much.